Okay, so we've heard everybody's comments loud and clear. We are very, very late with the vast majority of our 2025 gaming laptop testing. The reason for that is we initially received months ago so many devices that we were excited about reviewing, but unfortunately we encountered countless, and I mean countless problems with almost every single one of them. Now we've waited for retail devices, things that you can actually buy, not those pre-production samples that we got all that time ago. And we feel like this is going to be a better representation of what you will experience if you happen to purchase one of these things. So what I have here in front of me is the SCAR 16 with an RTX 5080 and the ROG SCAR 18 with a 5090. We are going to be comparing these laptops to exactly the same devices from a year ago. So with a 4090 and a 4080, along with a bunch of other 2024 and even earlier devices that we felt were some of the fastest that we have ever tested. And I know one of the biggest assumptions about 2025 gaming laptops is they're more expensive than 2024 models. And for the SCARs, this both is and isn't true. If you look at the models we're testing here next to their direct predecessors, the RTX 5080 equipped laptop costs about the same amount as the last generation. Though of course the 2024 model sunk below Low its launch price later in the year. Still, the SCAR 16 bucks this year's insane upwards pricing trend. But the strict SCAR 18 with its 5090 goes completely off the rails. What was a sub four grand gaming laptop has now ballooned to $4,500 US. And that's actually being generous because the price can vary a lot depending on the retailer you're buying from. Some of them have specs that expand the storage and memory options. I also need to mention this video is about the strict Strix SCAR series, not the regular Strix G laptops, which are meant to be a more affordable alternative. So they cut down some features and top out at just an RTX 5080, or in the AMD systems case, an RTX 5070 Ti. So yeah, these things can get unbelievably expensive. And look, in the midst of all of this pricing debate, there's one other thing that we need to talk about because power delivery on these laptops has been anything but stable since launch. Even in their highest performance modes, neither of these laptops achieved Nvidia's maximum TGP of 175 watts unless we hit them with a power virus like Furmark. Now the latest drivers Nvidia rolled out a few weeks ago did improve power delivery in some games, but on average we're still a good 21 watts away from peak wattage, which ironically aligns almost perfectly with Nvidia's dynamic boost overhead. So obviously, Nvidia is working behind the scenes to improve things, but they've got a couple more steps to go. On the CPU side though, it's another matter with the 275HX being fed a titanic amount of juice in all core workloads. And I'm sure what everybody wants to know about these gaming laptops is how they perform. So that's what we're going to kick this whole thing off with. So all of these laptops were tested in their absolute highest power setting outside of custom manual modes, of course. We also level the playing field by setting every single laptop here to discrete GPU mode, which sends the power directly to an external monitor. So let's start with gaming at 1600p, and the new Strix SCAR 18 delivers only a slight performance increase over the 2024 model. Sometimes in CPU focused games, it blazes ahead, likely due to the superiority of the 275HX or the 14900HX. You'll see more about this in our processor focused testing, but this new CPU is an absolute beast, a sort of hidden weapon for Intel. But there's good good news for people who want to save a few bucks with a 16 inch laptop running a 5080. The SCAR 16 manages to regularly beat the RTX 4090 in last year's 18 inch version while also competing really well against the RTX 5090 when you consider it costs around $1600 less. I think context is also important here, especially for the 5090's competitive position. Despite costing almost 5000 bucks, we're seeing at most 15% higher average frame rates than a nearly identical laptop that was launched over a year ago. And that's a big problem for what's supposed to be an expensive flagship desktop replacement launched in 2025. There are also some areas where the RTX 5090 and 5080 might not get the best averages, but their 1% lows get some pretty impressive bumps versus the previous generation. And that tends to make the overall gameplay experience much, much better. The main problem, well, that boils down to exactly what we saw with the desktop RTX 5000 series. Their performance delivery is super inconsistent and that naturally impacts the new scars in a pretty substantial way. So they end up struggling to differentiate themselves 
from 2023 and 2024 devices. I mean, sure, the 16 inch model with this 5080 does tend to fare a lot better overall, but at this point, I have to wonder if some of these games are being held back by a CPU bottleneck or whether the GPU and its drivers are the culprit. And 4K testing, well, that should get us an answer to that, since there's more of a focus on GPU output while the processor takes a bit of a backseat in most games. But this just proves the SCAR 18 is likely getting held back by the amount of power being delivered to its 5090. The Legion 9i, which averaged 7 watts more but showed peaks of 170 watts in some games, is able to power ahead, sometimes by a whole lot. So even at this higher resolution, the SCAR 18 and its flagship GPU are barely able to get noticeably higher frame rates than the 2024 model. And in many ways, it's a dead heat between them. I mean, this thing is fast, but not fast enough for its insane price. Ironically, the RTX 5080 equipped SCAR 16 has a more compelling story with consistently higher uplifts versus the previous generation. Again, we're seeing it match or even narrowly beat the SCAR 18 2024 with an RTX 4090, and often it's doing that with better 1% lows. I'd absolutely love to see what this thing could do if it was allowed that 175 watt red line without any BIOS tweaking. So that is where gaming ultimately lies on these laptops. But look, this is the Strix SCAR series, guys. Asus's flagship laptops. These are not meant to be necessarily just one dimensional gaming devices. They're meant to do so many other things. So let's see how they shake out in creator workloads. Well, in Blender, things look even better for the 5080 model with it showing absolutely massive improvements over the SCAR 16 from last year. And it essentially ties the RTX 5090, but the RTX 5090 is barely able to edge out its predecessor. Handbrake, well, it pretty much shows the same thing, but in this app at least, we've reached a point of every device getting what's essentially the same output time with all of the results falling within our margin of error. But the RTX 5000 series strengths really lie in export time from NLEs like Resolve, where the updates to Nvidia's NVENC engines can really flex their muscles. Here we're seeing a huge time savings for both laptops over 2024 models. But again, the SCAR 16 with its RTX 5080 is almost unbelievably close to a laptop that costs almost $2,000 more. And Premiere, well, it repeats that mantra with even better generational improvements for the RTX 5090 and 5080. But right now, Premiere doesn't support NVIDIA's multi-encode engine layout past two encoding streams, so the RTX 5090's triple setup isn't being fully utilized. In the future, I'm sure its performance will be even better. Moving into CPU workloads, and there's no doubt Intel's new Ultra 9 275HX is a beast of a processor, but Asus is also feeding it with a ton of power. Either way, both of these laptops are miles ahead of their predecessors here. Even single thread results get pretty big boosts with this generation, which could be one of the primary reasons why we saw good performance increases in lightly threaded games like CS2 and Rainbow Six. Meanwhile, those Cinebench results, they set the stage for the real world workloads. And they pretty much show the same thing with heavily multi-threaded environments obviously being the 275HX's real strengths. Though again, the Strix SCAR 16 does have a small advantage since its CPU is being fed just a little bit bit more juice. Handbrake is essentially a copy paste of those results too, with the 275HX just walking all over every single other processor here. There is a bit of a redemption arc for the SCAR 18 though, since it wins by a pretty wide margin in Lightroom. And yet there seems to be trouble brewing for these newer systems in Photoshop. For whatever reason, the results aren't that great, and they get beaten by older devices, sometimes by a whole lot, and that is just embarrassing. And look, raw CPU and GPU performance are one thing, but laptops are about a lot more than that, right? What we also wanna talk about is how that performance is delivered. Do these things just boil over with heat, or are they cool, calm, and collected like a lot of people are hoping that they're gonna be? Well, in gaming at least, these new laptops are quieter and run cooler than their 2024 analogs. I mean, sure, the SCAR 16 is a bit louder and hotter than the 18, but that's to be expected when you consider the bigger laptop's sheer size allows it to pack in a much larger heatsink and more extensive vapor chamber. Yet even in their highest performance modes, these are actually two of the quieter gaming laptops we've tested in the last year or so. Surface temperature 
temperatures are pretty decent too, with all of the hot zones pushed nicely away from the main typing zone and palm rest area. Though again, the 18 inch version fares better than the more compact one. And a lot of those lower temperatures are due to the upgraded cooling assembly within the new SCAR models, along with a revised intake and outlet system. Last year's models drew in most of their fresh air from their bases and used a combination of side and rear vents to exhaust the hot air. The new ones, well, they use smaller side openings that are now utilized as supplemental air intakes. Most of the cool air is still brought in through the underside though, but this generation has another little trick up its sleeves. You just flip this switch over to the side, pull a bit towards yourself, and the entire bottom cover opens up so you get completely tool-free access for upgrading your memory and storage. When you're done, just slide it back on, gently push until you hear a small click, and the indicator isn't red anymore, and that's it. The upgrade is complete. And I really have to give a ton of kudos to the ROG design team for this because this click to open and slide to close affair is, is probably the most brilliant thing that I've seen in laptop design in a long time. Focus specifically on people who want to upgrade these systems. Now, this is actually the tip of the iceberg in like a laundry list of cosmetic changes. What hasn't changed though from one generation to another is their overall footprints. The 2025 models aren't any slimmer, thinner, or lighter than the older ones. Though the design now has slightly tapered sides to look visually thinner. Basically the intent here is to create a desktop replacement system so the ROG laptop team's focus wasn't to put these things on a diet. That's the job for the Zephyr series. The IO connectors have received some small updates too. There's another USB USB type A port and the switch from a barrel style power connector to a slim tip. We're also now getting Thunderbolt 5 compatibility through both USB C ports. There's still a lot of cosmetic updates here though, like a textured lid that hides ASUS's unique Animatrix display. Though personally, I like the way it looks without this thing on. I really wish that ASUS would have maybe saved us all a few dollars and kicked this thing to the curb. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. They've also tightened up the gap between the display and the main chassis without sacrificing hinge stability. This is also the area where the Ford's facing speakers live. Oh, and thank you for finally removing that bloody distracting blinking storage system activity light. It felt like a laptop that was launched like 15 years ago. What I don't like is that by eliminating the webcam bump, they've had to thicken the SCAR's top bezel while killing the nice little zone you could easily grip to open the laptop with a single finger. The translucent sides have also been kicked to the curb and in their place is a classic matte black finish. Meanwhile, the keyboard deck loses its etching and semi-transparent look. There's now a huge swath of black. It might look a little bit less boring and pick up a ton of fingerprints, but from the way I see things, this just looks better. Speaking of the keyboard, other than some minor font changes, it's a copy paste from the last generation. So there's a good amount of throw distance and a solid actuation point, but it does feel a little bit slow since it needs more activation force than a lot of other gaming laptops. Honestly, I wish a bit more effort was put into this since it feels like a generation behind what folks like Legion and even MSI are offering these days. The same thing goes for the touchpad, it just feels a bit dated. There's decent accuracy and excellent palm rejection, but the integrated left and right buttons just feel mushy and downright lifeless. And I think I'm gonna say it here and now, I'm gonna start a campaign to try and push more manufacturers to ditch these integrated touchpad buttons. We need to go back to two physical left and right buttons here, guys, because this whole thing is just for aesthetics. This is form over function. And in a lot of cases, including this one, it just doesn't work well. But the other area that you aren't going to see any changes whatsoever is with the display. And you know what? I think I'm okay with that because the 2024 models pretty much hit a plateau and I'm not really sure where ASUS could have improved here. We're still talking about a 2.5K 1610 mini OLED running at 240 hertz on both 16 and 18 inch models. In our testing, it's more than bright enough even for a well-lit gaming room and it easily covers 100% of the DCI P3 color spectrum. But more importantly, this thing is very, very color accurate without any of the nasty redshift we've seen on so many current generation OLED screens, even on gaming laptops. There is one pretty big addition here for some people at least. There's a new double layered anti-reflective coating applied to the panel. You probably won't notice this if you're in a dark room, but it does make a difference in more well-lit environments. And I'll be completely honest here, hand on my heart. 
I've seen a lot of those so-called OLED gaming displays on 2025 gaming laptops so far. We've got a bunch of them in the lab here. And just subjectively, one next to another, I would take either of these mini LED screens in a heartbeat over any of those OLED panels. There is one other thing I want to discuss here, and that's battery life. And it might not be a huge selling point on what is essentially a desktop replacement device. But these laptops exhibited some very, very odd behavior here. In light load, the SCAR 18 got almost an hour more than the 2024 model, while the 16 inch actually topped our charts by getting just under seven and a half hours. And look, that might not look like much because you might be thinking, hey, we should be getting 10, 12, 14 hours from these things. Look, these are not thin and lights where you expect all day battery life. But we are getting there, especially with the 16 inch model. But things fell off a cliff the second we started playing any kind of online streaming video with the Strix Scar 16, which was competitive in light loads, but just got destroyed here. At least the 18 was able to squeak out a tie over its predecessor and hit them with a gaming load. And well, battery life, it just gets thrown out a window with every device here failing to get over two hours and most struggling to hit even 90 minutes. And this is actually something you might not hear all that much here on Hardware Canucks. I actually do like the lighting on these laptops. It has taken a huge step forward versus what other ROG devices did in the past. Instead of it being this odd, disjointed, in-your-face setup that just felt tacked on and half-assed, this time it's a unified downfiring lighting strip that runs around the SCAR's entire perimeter. It looks really good, though it's eye-searingly bright at the highest setting, and you'll need to control it through Armory Crate. My god, what a bloated mess that's become. It's like the ROG team purposely did everything they shouldn't do with software and said, yep, let's roll with this and call it a day. I think that these are actually some very good gaming laptops. Look, Asus took all of our criticisms from the previous generation and they've basically made them better in every way that they had control over. What they didn't have control over, unfortunately, is the RTX 5000 series and all the little hiccups it seems to be going through both on the desktop and now on the laptop side. There were some unbelievably huge performance expectations for gaming laptops with these new GPUs. And unfortunately, in a lot of ways, they simply failed to deliver. And a lot of that is because the move from the RTX 3000 series to 4000 series seemed like a massive leap forward in so many respects, from overall performance to battery life to efficiency to screen technology that was being updated at the time. SSD throughput took a huge step forward during that time too. The list goes on. It seems like every aspect of a typical gaming laptop got some kind of upgrade back then. But this, it just feels different. It feels like this market's hit its peak over the last two years, and now we're simply treading water here in 2025. Frame rates aren't going to wow anyone, especially on the uber expensive RTX 5090 equipped G18. Battery life is hit and miss. Prices for top shelf models have gone insane. There is one pretty big bit of silver lining though, and I'd say it's this. It's discard G16. This thing can do 90% with an RTX 5080 that the RTX 5090 model does while costing almost $2,000 less, being more portable. It, it, it the, the list goes on, right? In many ways, I've been very critical, and us here at Hardware Canucks have been very critical of RTX 5000 series laptops, but this thing I feel is a little bit different. Anyways, I guess that's pretty much it for this video. And I think the G16 and G18 perfectly sort of encapsulize 2025 gaming laptops. There's just so much potential here. The updates that have been done to the chassis, to just the creature comforts, are sort of playing second fiddle to all of the issues that have been happening on the hardware side of things. And I'm hoping that as drivers and firmware improve, and they've already improved since the pre-production devices that we had, that we finally see what these laptops can really deliver. But anyways, until that point, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks, and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.